ever seen that piece by Gauguin called Who Are We, Where Do We Come From, and Where Are We Going? It's, it's about the same idea. The layers of transformation that occur with all this happening are, are what we're focused on because it's a transformation that occurs in the community. And all the cultures that have come together and transformed into one new. And believe it or not, you are, besides my wife, you're the only person that has seen that, that's this, seen that. everything. Really? Everything, yeah, yeah, seen our mock-up. We haven't cool. really shown anybody. Yeah, nobody's really seen this. So. I was approached by uh, Luis, uh, oh gosh, a number of months ago about uh, this grand project that he had about doing the largest print in Texas, and of course Texas being one of the largest states in the country. Um, he was very excited about uh, the, the possibilities of doing this. We came up with this idea for uh, this three color print. Uh, originally we had thought, okay, let's try it. Let's Let's push the ante even higher for year five. Let's do our own. Let's do our own piece. How are we going to do it? And I started off, let's do five colors. And then we started talking about like, oh, I don't know, man, five colors is a lot of work. Well, let's do three colors. Three artists, three colors. It's based on, it's based on a famous painting by Gauguin. We came up with, a, you know, um, the idea of interchanging uh, the plates. What if we all three cut a plate and then we cut it like puzzle pieces? And we have three colors. Oh yeah, that's really cool. Wow, how many, what's the possibility? How many prints could you get out of that that would be completely individual? It turned out it was 33. And so we decided, wow, that would be one long, huge, long print that was not one of the pieces would be like any of the other pieces. And when he told me that he wanted it to be over 100 feet long, I said, well, the problem is we don't have enough wall space for this, but if we could support this by giving you an exhibition uh, and you can put in part of the print, then maybe this could lead up to something even bigger like a football stadium. You know, upping the ante in, in, in this large scale event uh, and that had to do with printing um, was kind of the thing that um, seemed natural to us. To, to continue pushing it forward and developing that whole idea of, hey, we can't just do it like this. Let's 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 make it a little bit more complicated, so that way it means more. It it, it uh, it's a, a show of skill and show of uh, of uh, dedication to what you're doing and knowledge about what you're doing, and makes it even that much more important. And the beautiful thing about being. Um naive <laughs> is that you don't realize what you're getting yourself into. This is going to be fun because this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Um, two proofs of that plate, two proofs of the uh, past plate, two proofs of uh, Kim's plate. We just lift them like uh, Russian dolls from the outside. So the outside plate comes out first.
Is Kim 10 already? Okay. I used to call myself an illustrator. I also call, have called myself a painter. How I think of it is like, um, I tell a story with my artwork and whether my artwork is a painting or it's a print or it's an installation sculpture, when you put it all together, it is an environment that hopefully I can immerse the viewer in. Luis and Paul were um, the first two artists to collaborate with Stone Metal Press to do this big giant wood cut and, and print it instead of using a press, but print it with a steamroller. So I went out there to watch them do it, and it was really, it was really exciting. They had just done one that was two color, never been done before. It was amazing, and I helped them with the inking of it and the printing of it, and then they said, let's do one in three colors. What if we all three cut a plate and then we cut it like puzzle pieces and we have three colors? Oh yeah, that's really cool. Wow, how many, what's the possibility? How many prints could you get out of that that would be completely individual? And it turned out it was 33. And so we decided, wow, that would be one long, huge, long print that was not one of the pieces would be like any of the other pieces. So we thought, this could be the largest print ever. <laughs> the image was influenced by a Paul Gauguin piece called, um, Who Are We? Where Do We Come From? Where Are We Going? And that's then what we named our piece because in Paul Gauguin's piece, he is examining creation iconography from two different cultures, you know, and putting it together and how do these go together. We're like, that's exactly what we're always talking about. Taking those ideas that came over and, and um, Luis's icons, putting them together as this culture has come together, because we're, we're all here together now, who are we now? And so Paul took that idea 
And so we then formed this one long piece that examined this transformation and um, evolution of culture as two cultures come together to create a whole nother culture. Well, we were talking about creation ideas and um, the first thing that came to my mind was original sin. You know, because that's Genesis, book of Genesis. That's where it all starts. Judeo-Christian, you know, philosophies all start in Genesis. Also, it was about this Western European influx into the Americas with this idea. And when I know that when a lot of my ancestors came to the to the Americas, um, was right around the early 1800s. That was about the time that the French blue was real big and a lot of the people who were coming over here were bringing wallpaper. Wallpaper was huge because when they came here they had to, they had these wooden houses, they had to put wallpaper or some kind of tapestry. That was their artwork on the walls just for insulation. So it was wallpaper and a lot of the wallpaper was in this French powder blue. So I chose that blue to kind of represent that time period that migration time period um, and then the apple to represent the judeo-christian original sin idea of how we even got here of the creation of man and woman and that's really the power of art to the third power how we came up with art to the third power is because we had all three been working individually and um, then when we started working collaboratively on this we realized how much even more creative power there was working with other artists and collaborating with other artists and, and um, especially artists who you gel with so well and are so respectful um, of you as an artist. So that was, you know, a part of the power and, and a part of the reason why we came up with Art to the Third Power. Because originally it was because there's three of us. But then we realized that really the third power, once we started into the project and we had to print it and then show it, and we needed all these other artists and all this other community to come together to help us make our vision happen. And then it became a part of their vision too, that the community was the other power. And I think that's what I've learned almost more than anything from this project is that it, working collaboratively with a creative community is so much more rich than just creating in isolation. We can't create in isolation successfully. You know, we have to work together. My name is Luis Valderas. Um, I'm uh, an artist. Uh, from San Antonio. I'm originally from uh, McAllen, Texas, the border. Well, I consider myself a uh, frontera artist. And when we came up with this idea for uh, this three color print, uh, originally we had thought, okay, let's try it. Let's, let's push the ante even higher for year five. And, and the team that was involved to make that print day happen was a huge uh, endeavor, it required a lot of coordination. It's just people and a lot of fellow artists in, in the San Antonio community that we know, um, you know, artists in their own, accomplished artists in their own realm, um, just jumped right in and, and became a part of this and helped make this happen. That was the same thing that happened in the, uh, in the um, installation, in, in the big public art installation at Alamo Stadium, the last mile at the rock pile. You know, upping the ante in, in, in this large-scale event uh, um, that had to do with printing um, was kind of the thing that um, seemed natural to us, to, to continue pushing it forward and developing that whole idea of, hey, we can't just do it like this, let's, let's, let's make it a little bit more complicated so that way it means more, it, 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 uh, it's a, a show of skill and a show of, uh, of uh, dedication to what you're doing and knowledge about what you're doing and makes it even that much more important. My work is about uh, 
uh, Mesoamerican um, mythology. In my story, what, what I'm, I'm depicting in my image is the, uh, the journey, that uh, rite of passage that um, the corn god has to undertake. He's going into the underworld through the cosmic tree of the universe, and um, he's going in through the mouth of the earth mother, earth mother monster, in order to be swallowed by her and then come back out. He's going through the jaws, the central tree uh, in, in the square format, and, and then the jaws are, are both a, an earth beast facing you with two eyes, but they're also uh, two um, beasts facing each other and in, in capturing and fighting over this central figure where everything is divided into a cosmic uh, dual uh, energy of, of uh, sky and earth and the wet and the dry that's between the drought season and the rain season. And, um, and it's really interesting because a lot of this energy that was involved in the piece itself um, kind of, uh, kind of mimicked, um, was mimicked within the, uh, the happenings. I mean, it's all part of, of being in this amazing, um, kind of fertile place of art in San Antonio. That's what San Antonio has. It has this energy and, and you know, you're either making it happen or you're helping somebody because they're your friend and you believe in them. And I mean, that's, we're there for our friends and we, we help them, you know, make things happen because, you know, we believe in what they're doing. And, uh, and I think that a lot of that is, is happening in San Antonio. There's a lot of that. My name is Paul Karam. I'm a local artist, and I'm just a local kid that, that just loves to, to create. Um, so we did a couple, we did a couple um, uh, uh, shows with Stone Metal Press, and they were just using black, black on, you know, just black ink. So it was just one, one piece. So Louie and I started talking. I said, hey, why don't we do two colors? Let's do that, let's not tell anybody. Let's just get out there. And um, when we get out there, when we get out there, we'll just kind of have our own inking station with our own color. So the process of that was us taking our piece of plywood, cutting out our design, and then cutting with a jigsaw, cutting one piece out that we wanted to color separately. So then we ink the plate up, take this piece out, ink the plate up, ink our little separate piece up here, drop it in there and print it. And that would give you two colors. But when we did that, I mean, oh my gosh, everybody's like, oh my God, wow, that's great, that's cool. And, and there's different ways and different methods of inking. I could, we could have inked our plates just a little at a time and had multicolor, but ours was to cut out, you know? What happened is we were just sitting around talking about, hey, Let's do our own, let's do our own piece. I'm always the future guy. I'm always looking at the, at the future. I want to leave something here. I'm always looking at the future. I wanted a, a kind of a cold but warm futuristic color. So I was looking for like a, a gold color, a silver color, kind of just that, would, that represent the future, you know, kind of. We had black, blue, and then ochre is the color that I use, which is a gold color. We just went with these colors and it really, it really meshed, it really meshed well. It gave it some perspective, it gave it some, some depth, and, and um, I was very pleased with it. It all came together really well, and we just sat there and designed, and we wanted all our pieces to have a form, we wanted it to have a formation. You know, we wanted it to have a formation. So when we started that show, I mean, when we did the printing process for that, you know, when we did that, that it was about 25, 30 volunteers. We did that, that was cool, because it started off with three people, then it went to like 25 people, and then we went, we did a, the, the Alamo Stadium that turned into 90 people. And then we had our show and there was, you know, probably a hundred people that went to that or over. So we were, after we did it and we did our initial piece and rolled it and all that, it just kind of, then it was everybody else's art. Everybody started getting involved. They wanted to see what we had to say. We had some great photographers, you know, we had Luis Garza, um, we had um, Paul Cruz, and we had um, James Borrego, you know, we had, we had all the top dogs helping us and it really came out to be a spectacular show and it's not done, it's not done yet. But there will come a time where it just takes its own course, you know, and it, it just goes on its own by itself and that's the part that I'm anticipating. I can't wait till that part comes up. It's 
so that event and bringing those people together was was something else and that I won't forget. I'll never forget that one. One of the things I like about the, this project as printmakers, printmaking is typically not viewed as a public art project, but they succeeded in making their printmaking process an actual public art piece by uh, getting so many people in the community involved, having so many volunteers, getting our students involved from the Mosaic program, and then by going to uh, a football stadium and getting people in the community to help put this together uh, was really magical and was really uh, something pretty special and, and, and fantastic. That all of these people lined up before they, they lifted it, I think it was Luis, got this shot of all the people standing right there in a row and I realized this is not about this print at all. It's not about the print. The artwork's not the print. The best thing about this whole thing was, was all the new people that I met in the arts and the community that was willing to help and everybody um, I met, I mean, I met so many new people, so many new artists, and, you know, I met, I met you, James, I met all these guys, you know, and it was just, you know, and then to have that support. The collaboration um, is really, really, it was, it was an exciting, exciting event. I'd do it again, um, whenever. But I want to do something else. I want to do another one, you know. I want to bring people together again into something else that we dream up and that we, uh, coordinate with our community. And all the artists just came together and let's do this. And then it turned out to be bigger than just us three. Come on. You know, we just had an idea and said, hey, let's do this. And then we incorporate all this other stuff going on. It's kind of interesting. The artwork is all of these people who showed up on this field today to pick it up and get this picture taken and to be a part of it. That's, that's the artwork in this is this community that came together to make art happen. Uh, well, you know, I'm glad to play a very small role uh, in terms of being uh, photographed and uh, anything that we can do also to support the spirit of it and to make sure that the project is successful. Uh, the city of San Antonio for a long time has been supportive of the arts and we want to continue to be.